Hey guys, welcome to another Substance Painter tutorial today. And this is going to be showing you how to make a basic render when you maybe finish your texturing on your new asset and you want to use the iRay renderer to create maybe either, whether it be a render of the asset which has the alpha channel, so it'll be cut out from the background so you can use it in maybe some promotional work, or you want it with a sort of background included. In Substance Painter 2018.1, and I think versions below that as well, they have a little icon uh, in the top bar, which is the rendering mode. So you can click that and it will put you into a scene with pretty much just your HDRI map that you're using for the scene. Now this model that I've got is the one I created, but it's flat in the scene. I could have stood it up and maybe put it on a, a hanger, but it was just for the sake of showing this. You can see that it's a pair of headphones. Now. You've got a bunch of settings on the right hand side which control what you're going to want to do with your render. Now you can see at the top that the rendering's done it in a particular amount of time. It shows the amount of frames that it's already rendered and it has different settings for min samples and max time. You can up the max time to increase the render. If I increased max time here and, and turned it up, it would make sure that it increase the iterations until it was finally rendered. This is just down low by default, just so they don't have to wait very long to get a sort of basic render. And then you can override the viewport resolution and give your own resolution that you might want. Say if you want a 4K image for when you render it out, and then you can save the render when it is finally finished. And you have a few things that you might want to control. You might not like the particular HDRI map that you're using on the environmental map, so you can change it and you can choose a different map that you might want to use as the sort of, to get the lighting. And I quite like the one towards the bottom, which is the soft to ring low contrast. And you can see it here and you can see the um, headphones in the scene and we can see the background and we maybe don't want that happening. We can obviously adjust things like the exposure of the actual map itself but we can keep that on zero for now. And you can scroll down and you can move to, you often you want to use the dome type which is this sphere with ground because if you do that it'll be without the actual ground and that's what we want to be able to use. And then what you can do is you can set a clear colour which is always good because you maybe want to get rid of that background that's there, you can set your clear colour to whatever you want, you know, if you, maybe if you're making something promotional, usually something darker, or maybe just off the darkness is okay. So you can get a more of a, a look about it. You want to enable ground because I think that looks nicer because you get a shadow closer to the object. And you can adjust the Y value, so you bring the ground, which is almost like an imaginary plane, close to the object and then you almost see it as if it was situated very close to the ground and you get sort of nice shadowing there. And you can increase or decrease the shadow intensity but it gives a good contrast if you have the shadow intensity all the way up. You can increase or decrease the glossiness of the actual ground and then you do have the ability to use post-processing effects that if you've used any sort of game engine any sort of game engine work or any other things from other sort of industries that you can enable anti-aliasing, maybe to take a little bit and refine the sort of edges of your model. You can use color correction if you want to adjust saturations, that if you want to make, uh, see the blues look a little bit more blue in my model. Don't really adjust the contrast because it will just literally kill the render. So just leave that very close to one if you're going to adjust it. Tone mapping is sometimes a nice one to use and you can use the different function and the sensorimetric one. Um, you can up the exposure and the gamma slightly if you need to bring out a little bit more lightness to the actual object itself. But these are just some sort of basic parameters that you can look at to sort of creating your render. And then what you could do is you could focus in on the render depending on where you're going to take it. You can use the regular controls by pressing Alt and middle clicking and you can move around the sort of viewport and then you can hold shift and right click to just move the environmental map around to get something that you might and you can frame it however you might want. And then what you can do from there is up the max time like I said because it'll stop at a particular count we can up the max time to something like 55 and then give it chance and you will see the iterations up at the top uh, slowly move up and up and up. And once your rendering is completed, you can scroll down and click save render. 
and then by default you can set this as a PNG image and you can save it as headphones render and from there you can find it in your files and you can open it up and you'll see that it'll be rendered out in your picture viewer just like this and then what you can do is you can open up in any photo editing program and you'll see that this now doesn't have a background and you can use it for promotional materials or whatever you want if you want to put on a background yourself something more interested or do whatever you need to or you could go back into substance painter and save it out as a jpeg or something like that and you wouldn't have the transparency anymore and it would just have the background that you created. So these were just a few simple ways to manage and create a simple basic render directly inside Substance Painter and just going through some basic settings. You can tweak these as required. So best of luck and thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.